On the broadcast tonight, back on track, a new General Motors is out of bankruptcy in record time, but there are speed bumps ahead. World stage, from an audience with the Pope to a hero's welcome in Africa, President Obama stays in the spotlight. But what's been accomplished? Dismal discovery, grief and disbelief as the original coffin of a civil rights icon is found rotted and ruined. And making a difference, finding a peaceful haven after war with an activity that fits these wounded warriors to a T. Plus, what do you do when your state pays you with an IOU and your bank says, no thanks? Nightly News begins now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening, I'm Lester Holt in tonight for Brian Williams. Less than two months ago, there was a virtual death watch over General Motors. But billions of government dollars later and after what amounts to a pit stop in bankruptcy, GM is tonight free from court supervision. A new GM, if you will, tried to move back into the fast lane with a slimmer look and new ways of selling cars. The reinvigorated company is even talking about repaying those massive government loans ahead of the 2015 deadline. But no matter what road GM travels going forward, it will still be looking out at the same rocky economic landscape. So, what's the strategy? Phil LeBeau covers the auto industry for CNBC. He joins us now from Detroit with more. Phil, good evening. Good evening, Lester. Strange as it sounds, going through bankruptcy may have been the easy part of fixing GM. Now comes the tough part, winning over skeptical American car buyers. It's an exciting day for General Motors. 40 days Today after declaring bankruptcy, General Motors emerges from court protection leaner and promising to be a greener company focused on the customer. We know we have to change. Today is about uh, the beginning of that change. Backed by $33 billion in federal money, GM used bankruptcy to shed $40 billion in debt, start closing 13 plants, and cutting 27,000 jobs, including 35% of its U.S. executives. A massive restructuring that ran through the courts with incredible speed. This is basically Michael Phelps in Beijing. It's, it's that fast. It's that remarkable. There are almost no words to describe it. Downsizing from eight brands to four, Chevy, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick, GM is also dropping 2,400 dealers across the country. While it still sells one out of every five cars in the U.S., GM has yet to find a way to stop losing market share. They've got to talk to customers the way customers are used to being talked to. And if that's Twitter for some customers, that's what it'll be. GM has started using Twitter and Facebook to reach younger buyers. The bigger challenge is changing the perceptions of Americans who think GM models are lackluster and poorly built. Enter GM veteran Bob Lutz, now in charge of marketing the automaker. Colorful, candid, and sometimes controversial, Lutz once called the role of cars in global warming a crock. Look, it's immaterial. Lutz now has to find the right message to convince skeptics who have written off GM. I think there is a desire to see General Motors succeed, and um, I, my job is to translate that desire to succeed into a desire to, to, for more people to buy our cars and trucks. There are still a number of Americans willing to give General Motors a second chance. In fact, a recent NBC News poll found that 75% of those surveyed might consider buying a big three model as a way to help out the struggling automakers. Lester? Phil LeBeau, thanks. Turning now to President Obama's trip overseas where he wrapped up the G8 summit, then capped off his last day in Italy with an audience with the Pope. Then it was on to Africa, where the first family has just arrived in Ghana, their last stop before returning home. We began our coverage where the day began. NBC's chief White House correspondent Chuck Todd reports from Rome. The final summit gathering included more than two dozen leaders in addition to the G8 powers, suggesting this group has outgrown itself. Everybody wants the smallest possible group, smallest possible organization that includes them. This is Mr. Obama's fifth summit and his presidency isn't even six months old. But he says they're still necessary because the United Nations has dropped the ball. There's a sense that when it comes to big, tough problems, the U.N. General Assembly is not always working as effectively and rapidly as it needs to. So the president called this summit support. highly productive, despite the fact most of the accomplishments were simply pledges on climate change, Iran, nuclear proliferation, securing loose nukes, 
economic stimulus. Finally, the president credited his own personal intervention for the member nation's decision to increase food aid for poorer nations, mostly in Africa, from $15 billion to $20 billion. When my father traveled to the United States from Kenya to study, at that time, the per capita income and gross domestic product of Kenya was higher than South Korea's. Today, obviously, South Korea is a highly developed and relatively wealthy country, and Kenya is still struggling. He said with comprehensive planning, African countries can match that prosperity, but he didn't shy away from gently admonishing the African leaders on what needs to change. In many African countries, if you want to start a business or get a job, you still have to pay a bribe. Thank but you it was not quite goodbye from Italy. Arrivederci. He had one final stop, the Vatican. For any president, meeting the Pope is one of those win in Rome opportunities. Politically, though, for Mr. Obama, it's a chance for him to connect to the one in four Americans who are Catholic. Thank you so much. Oh, well, uh, it's a great honor for me. Thank they you began so with a face-to-face -face conversation in their official roles. Then the first family and senior staff members joined the president. Yeah, His brother is a priest. Oh, yeah. For a traditional audience and blessing from Pope Benedict the 16th. Chuck Todd, NBC News, traveling with the president in Rome. In Ghana.